Hi guys and welcome back to the video series on lab H. In the first video I talked about a breadboard and a 5 volt DC voltage supply that you will be using to build your circuit today. So in the second video I'm going to be talking about the various circuit components that you will find in your lab kits. The first thing that you will find is this little LED. Now an LED as you can see has two wires sticking out of it. The first one is a positive wire. It's a longer wire. It's called the anode. The second one, which is the shorter one, is the negative. It's called the cathode. You will then find a resistor. It's very important to be able to measure the value of this resistance in order to be able to put on, on the breadboard and make sure that your circuit works properly. To do that, what you will use is this. It's called a multimeter. You will move your dial to the ohm mode once you've done that, you will take your two probes, the positive probe and the negative probe. You will take your resistor, touch one end of the resistor to the positive, the other end of the resistor to the negative. And this will give you the measurement of the resistance on your multimeter screen. The other thing you can do with your multimeter is determine whether a connection has actually been made or two holes on your breadboard are actually connected to each other or not. To do that, you will turn your dial to the diode mode, press the mode button. What you should see on your multimeter screen is a sound signal right up there, a sound sign. When you have that, you will take your two probes, check them by touching them together, when you hear that noise, that noise is what signifies that a circuit connection has actually been made. So say I've connected two resistors and I want to be able to check whether they're actually connected or not. So I will touch one end to one end of the resistors, the second end to the first end of the resistors and check if there's actually any circuit connection if there is any noise. I can do the same for two holes in my breadboard as well by using two wires to, to check. Now that we have checked whether our circuit connections are made or not and the value of our resistance, what we can also check is the DC voltage level using this mode and the current in the milliampere range. So now that you're a little bit familiar with how to use a multimeter and resistors, LED, the breadboard, and your 5 volt DC voltage supply. What we will do is start connecting our circuit on our breadboard. So here's my breadboard, the one that I connected to my 5 volt DC supply through these binding posts right here. I still have the connections in place, but you do remember I told you how you need to connect your binding posts to the corresponding rails. So the red goes to the red, the black will go to the blue. And for this, what I will need to do is use a wire. I will take my first wire, loosen my ground binding post, which is the black one. Now, as you can see, there is a hole right there under the binding post. I will insert my wire through that hole hold it in place and tighten my binding post over it. So once my wire has been secured, I will take the other end of the wire and connect it to the blue rail. There we go. So now my ground connection is complete between my 5 volt DC source, my binding post, and the rails on my breadboard. The second thing that needs to be done is that the power supply binding, the binding post, the red one, has to be connected to the red rail. So take another wire and follow the exact same procedure.
And there we go. Now, as you know, all the holes in the blue rail are connected and all the holes in the red rail are connected. However, there's a valley between these two sides and that is something that we have to pay attention to when we're making these connections. All right, guys. So the next step is to take your resistor. So the first resistor I am connecting across my power supply rail and one of the columns. To make a parallel connection, what I need is a, another resistor which needs to be connected to both the terminals of the first resistor. To do that, I've got my other resistor right here. What I have done is connected the first end to my red rail. So that means the first end of this resistor and the first end of this resistor are connected to each other. However, the second two ends, these two, are not connected to each other because they are placed in two different columns in two different holes. And therefore, what I need to do is bridge this connection using a wire. So I've got my wire here. And now I've successfully made a parallel connection. So there we go. Now the next step is to take my LED. Now is the time when, when knowing anode and cathode comes handy. So I will take my LED and insert it in a way that the positive is towards my resistors and the negative is pointing the other way. There we go. Now, what I need to do is make sure that the anode of my LED is connected to the resistor. Taking the wire, I have connected the anode of my LED to my resistor. The last thing that I need to do is connect the cathode, which is the negative of my LED, to the ground terminal in order to complete the circuit. This is what's called a closed circuit. I'm inserting my wire into one of the holes in the same column as the cathode and then the other end of the wire into the blue ground rail and there we go now my circuit is complete i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you look at the next one where i will be showing you a circuit simulation on a website called tinkercad thank you